Do you have tiny little bumps like these on your skin? They suddenly appear one day and just won't go away. You've tried all kinds of acne products but nothing seems to work. Are you now slowly losing your confidence? Then today's video is for you because today I'm going to share with you how to get the clear smooth skin back and banish those little dots for good. Hello this is Sara Deba. I love science skincare and science of skincare and today I'll be talking about how to get rid of those stubborn bumps on your skin commonly known as fungal acne. Before I discuss the solution, let's first learn what these bumps actually are. We mainly get two types of bumps on our skin. One is called closed comedians, one is called fungal acne. If you put the picture of these two types side by side, you'll find that they look very similar. This is particularly why many people struggle to get rid of these bumps. They mistake these bumps for closed comedians and try acne controlling products as cl closed comedians are Technically, one type of acne. But these bumps are not acne. So acne products won't actually work on them. Then what are these bumps? The internet calls them fungal acne, but actually these are fungal infection. In dermatology, they are called pterosperm folliculitis or melasesia folliculitis. I hope I'm pronouncing them right. Melasesia is the name of a yeast that naturally lives on our skin. It generally lives peacefully with other fungi and bacteria on our skin and doesn't cause any issue for most people. But for some people, this is might suddenly grow in number and mess up the natural microbiome of the skin. As a result, we start to see some symptoms, like red rash-like bumps that look very much like close comedians. But then, how do you know which is which? Difference between close comedians and fungal acne. Pterosperm folliculitis or fungal acne appears in similar size and forms. They cluster together and look exactly the same like this. Close comedians, on the other hand, appears in various sizes and forms. In the case of close comedians, some of them might be small, some big, some inflamed, some with black tips, and some even with pores. Fungal acne is usually itchy and looks a bit pinkish. Close comedians usually have skin color and don't feel itchy unless you have allergy. Another important characteristic is that your usual acne treatment will not work on fungal infection. What causes fungal acne? The most common reason for fungal acne or pterosperm folliculitis is hot and humid weather. If you're someone who lives in a hot, humid country with long summer time, or you tend to exercise or sweat a lot, or spend a lot of time in the kitchen in a hot, closed environment, you are most likely to face pterosperm folliculitis. Our genetics also play a role, obviously, because not everyone who lives in a hot country or sweat profusely will get fungal acne. Another reason is suppressed immune system. It might be caused by some medications or treatment. Overproduction of oil is not a cause but might trigger fungal infections for some people. Therefore, oily skin people might encounter pterosperm folliculitis more often than others. How to treat fungal acne? There are ingredients which have really great antifungal properties. You just need to apply them topically, meaning you have to apply them on top of the skin and they will get rid of those arrowing bumps for you. Some of these ingredients are commonly used in cosmetics, for example, ketoconazole or zinc pyrethine. Fortunately, there are lots of antifungal over-the-counter products with these ingredients that will help you to get rid of these pesky little bumps. They are both wash off and leave-in treatments. I'll discuss the wash-off treatments first because they are super affordable and very easily found. And these are anti-dandruff shampoos. Don't get shocked, I'm explaining why I'm telling you to put anti-dandruff shampoo on your face. Fungal acne and dandruff both are caused by the same yeast malassezia. That's why they're treatable by the same product. Some of my favorite antifungal shampoos for fungal acne are Head and Shoulder Antidandruff Shampoo, Salt and Blue Antidandruff Shampoo, and Nizural Antidandruff Shampoo with 1% ketoconazole. But won't these shampoos dry out your face? Mm, they might, but I'll also share how you can prevent that from happening. First wash your face with plain water, then take some shampoo on your hand, rub them together to make foam, then apply it to the infected area, wait for 2-5 to five minutes, then wash it off. Do apply moisturizer afterwards because otherwise your skin might feel very dry. But remember to apply a light moisturizer because occlusive heavy moisturizers might trigger the problem for some people again. Another wash of products that is great for both fungal acne and regular acne is salicylic acid. Salicylic acid is an all-in-one ingredient. It can unclog your pores, reduce oil production and even exfoliate your skin. If you want to know more about it, please check out my video on exfoliating acids. You can try wash of salicylic acid product like the CeraVe salicylic acid cleanser or leave-in product like the Polar Choice 2% BHA. 
another ingredient that might help to keep this fungal infection away is niacinamide. Now, niacinamide is an antifungal, but it does help to control oil production, which in turn will help control melasthesia, as yeast loves oil. The ordinary niacinamide is a pretty affordable option, but you can look for other niacinamide products from your country as well. Sulfur is another great ingredient that helps control oil. So you can try sulfur masks like the acne free sulfur masks to use a couple of times a week. Another good option might be Murad Rapid Relief Acne Sulfur Mask. One thing to remember is that not every person will see great results with over-the-counter antifungal products. Some people might need higher percentage prescription-only products. Some people might even need to take antifungal oral medicine under the supervision of a doctor. But the products I mentioned is a pretty good place to start your fungal acne treatment. Another important reminder is that fungal acne can sometimes come back again if the trigger like hot environment or medications return. This yeast lives naturally on our skin. So the purpose of these treatments should be to to keep the yeast under control instead of getting rid of it permanently. Also, there are no such thing as fungal acne safe products. So please don't freak out trying to sort through the products or ingredients thinking that you can't use them if you have fungal acne. There's only one product that you might want to avoid if you have molestasia folliculitis is facial oil as yeast feeds on oil. Other than that, just carry on with your regular skincare routine along with your fungal acne treatment products. So this was my ultimate guide to identifying and getting rid of fungal acne from your forehead, face, back or any place of the body. If you have any more questions, leave them below. See you next time. Till then, take care for yourself and remember to love the skin you're in. This is Sarah Diva signing off today from Diva's Quest.